Right, let's get down to it. Kerry against Dublin. We won't get all misty-eyed about the olden days, but they are huge rivals up to the present day. A lot of Kerry people are still sore over the 2011 final and feel that they have a score indeed to settle. Alan, you've played against uh, these teams so many times, you probably know their shoe sizes, uh, uh, you know them so well. But we have seen Kerry perform very well in the first half, but then fade in the second half. What do you kind of, when you analyse that, what, what do you think is the problem? Um, well, I think over the years, certainly in games against Kerry and watching them, um, they do like getting a good start in matches and they are quite good at it, in fairness. Um, so, like, it's probably a mixture between other teams coming back into the game after Kerry have had their period of dominance and maybe also um, possibly some of the older legs in the Kerry team maybe fading a small bit and they maybe not ha not having as strong as a bench mm -hmm. as they used to have because of injuries, etc., and retirements. So, um, you know, maybe they're the two possible reasons, but, I mean, they're starting so well in games, they're obviously investing a lot of energy into the first half of matches and as a result, then the opposition are going to have their period of dominance, and it's probably just panning out like that. Malachi, maybe I'm wrong here, but I get the sense that the hype isn't as big as previous Kerry Dublin clashes. What do you think? No, I wouldn't think so. I haven't said that. There's a, it's a full house on, on Sunday, and there's no doubt it'll, it'll be a tremendous atmosphere and, and added and so on. But I would think that, that Kerry certainly are coming in under the rear, radar for, for a change, you know, and, and I suppose by their own admission, their, their form hasn't been great this year, and that they were excellent in the first half against Cork, and then the. the, the uh, tailed off a wee bit against Cavan then I think that even Cavan would, would say themselves I think Cavan went out very much in the, in the early stages to make sure that Kerry didn't blitz them but Cavan would have been disappointed with how they played themselves and Kerry then I think went up by 8 or 9 points at half time and I think at that stage they, they just I suppose felt that if they didn't do anything stupid they, they'd win the game and that's how it panned out so it's very unusual for Kerry to be coming in um, you know as underdogs you know and you, you look at their team and you look at uh, I saw somewhere yesterday where the amount of All-Iron medals is on the start and team and the, on the bench and so on so they're coming in they haven't really played that well you know you imagine there's a big game in and I'm sure they're just relishing the chance to, to, to get at it on Sunday yeah, but Kieran Donaghy is not starting which would suggest that Kerry have a, have a different game plan uh, because there is a hypothesis going that the Dublin full back line might be weak under the high ball Cork tried it uh, in their game so maybe we're getting a dummy team here, but what do you think is going to be the game plan from a Kerry perspective? It'll it'll totally vary, you know, if if he starts or whether he doesn't. Um, you know, I suppose if you look at if you looked at the Cork game, the quarter final against Dublin, they they really did expose their full back line. Um, you know, Karen Sheehan caught five or six great balls when it was pumped in high to them. The Dublin full back line tend to tend to mark out in front and do whatever they can to stop their man getting the ball. So they're probably a small bit exposed in terms of a high ball going in over the top. But um, you have to look at the three lads that are in there, James O'Donnell, who, Declan O'Sullivan, who'd be probably one of the best ball carriers in the country, and, um, and Darren O'Sullivan as well. Three really, really fast lads. So it's probably what, the, what Kerry, I'd say, would imagine will do is they'll probably bring them out and then maybe look for balls in over the top. Um, you could even move the Gooch in into corner forward, um, especially if Donny he plays. Um, the two of them have a really good understanding. Um, but you'll see two 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 really different styles of play, mm -hmm. especially if Donny he plays. I'd say I'd imagine you'll see a lot of high diagonal ball going in on top of him, like he's done throughout the years, and he can he can lay it off then to the likes of Declan and Darren O'Sullivan to get scores. Emmett mentions about the Gooch about Colum Cooper. I mean, in terms of our our quiz man, Ger Brennan, he's not a really tight man marker. Do you think he could afford to give Cullum Cooper, a quality player like that, as, as much space as normal? I don't think so. And, and I would say that Dublin will have plans for that because I think Jair Brennan as well uh, gets back a lot and sort of fills the hole in, in front of the full back line and, and gives him extra cover there. And certainly I wouldn't think he'll do that. But I, would, I would imagine if he's doing that, someone else would pick up Cooper because, you know, as everybody knows, the Gooch is you know, out there and that's why he's gone out there this year, I presume, is because he's been bottled up inside and he wasn't, wasn't getting a chance. He's been double teamed and so on. Whereas at the minute he's getting on a lot of ball, you know, and, and he, he's threading some brilliant ball through, he's got great vision on the ball and everything else. I suppose the only thing I suppose from Kerry's point of view, they'd like him to be on the receiving end of those balls mm -hmm. as well, you know. So, um, so would you play him corner forward or on the 40? Um, I suppose, you know, Kerry know what's going on over the last couple of years and they feel that he'll get more space out there and, and, and uh, be able to get the ball through. And I think that's maybe why they've, they've played the, the three on the inside line that they played in the Munster final as well and it worked very well for them. 
having said that, the way football is going and, and, and you know, the, the half-back line now, if, if your team is on top of the middle field and if Dublin are on top, the half-backs are going to be driving up mm. the field, which means then that, that the Gucci is actually going further away from goal and he could end up spending his time defending and so on. So that's yeah. probably why the, at that, that stage maybe they will be looking to, to get him back inside. You know? And as well as that with, with Donaghy, you know, Donaghy all of a was used to had a telepathic understanding. Yeah. They were used to having him there and that's, that's why he played so well because the Gucci was looping around him and so on. So there's a lot of variables there and, and I suppose, but as Emmett says, I'd say it'll change during the game. Yeah, well, even in 2011, in that final, I remember Kieran Donnelly had probably his best game that year when he wasn't playing that well, maybe, but he had a very good final. And um, he was key to Kerry's tactics on attacking the Dublin kick out as well. He actually went out to half the, the, the wing forward position and tried to counteract the, the Stephen Cluxton kick out and, you know, did very well on that. So, mm. you know, that would be a major strength of Kieran Donnelly's as well because obviously if you, if you attack Dublin's kick out, that's a major part of, that, of their game. So, I wouldn't be surprised if he is playing to see him out in the, the half forward line and then drifting into the full forward line as well. You know, so it's interesting to see how, how they're going to match up. Let me, let, we've got loads of tweets uh, coming into the programme, uh, I know, about the, the, the tactics in terms of uh, the kickouts. Like we have one here from Anthony Hayes. Does Alan see kickout strategies as playing a big role in Sunday's semi final? Yeah, well, in, in any game nowadays. It's um, part of yeah, it. Yeah, really. I mean, there's whatever, there could be up to 40 kickouts in a game, like so. It's a huge part of the game. Um, and certainly against Dublin, I suppose, that's probably where we struggle maybe off our own kickout. Is, you know, they attacked us hard on, on our own kickout and, you know, got a lot of scoring opportunities as a result. We would have felt that, you know, we attacked their kickout well in the first half, uh, which meant we were, we were in the game. Um, but they probably got their own kickout going in the second half, which meant they were probably overwhelming us in terms of possession then. So I'm sure Kerry are going to really try and attack the Dublin kickout, you know, from the off on Sunday and, and obviously try and win as many breaks off their own kickout as well. But, you know, that's the big difference I see in Dublin in the last year or two is they're really being aggressive on the opposition kickout. Yeah. They're playing six forwards high up the pitch. There's very little space to find your men. And, um, you know, if you give forwards like they have... Um, you know, that amount of possession, they're going to hurt you. So Kerry will need to, to limit Dublin's, I suppose, advantage on, on the kickouts that, that they've had so far this year. One of the players of the championship for me, anyway, is Jack McCaffrey, the left half-back for Dublin. You play in that position. So how, how, how would Kerry plan to stop Jack McCaffrey? Because he obviously did damage to Cork going forward. Yeah, he did a lot of damage now, and he's done a lot of damage over the course of the championship. Um, I, know, I suppose from, from our point of view, when we... When we played him in the championship this year, we tried to put him on, on the back foot as much as we could. Um, you know, in terms of getting Owner Flaherty on the ball as much as you could, um, getting him to take him on as much as you could, getting him to come off the shoulder as much as you could. But you know, he's he's one of the most dangerous backs in the country at the minute. Um, his speed is phenomenal. Um, I remember a couple of times during the course of the championship, I couldn't get anywhere near him running down the line after him, and a lot of our faster lads couldn't either. But and you're you able know, to move now, fairness, yeah. <laughs> But he, at, that t at that time of the match, you know, but he's, um, he's extremely good at finishing. He's had a couple of goal chances. He sneaks in for goals. He comes in as far as the 45 and, you know, his, he loses his marker and he comes in and he, he's able to, to ship points off and, or else, you know, got in for a couple of goals. He got in for a fantastic goal against Cork the last yeah. day. So I think the, really the thing that you need to do is to put him on the back foot as much as you can yeah. and get and him defended as much as you can and put him under in, pressure. In a, yeah. in a word, Emmett Bolton, who do you think is going to win this match? Kerry. Kerry. One vote for Kerry. Alan? Dublin, just about. Oh, there. The casting vote is all yours, yeah, Malachi O'Rourke. No, I go for Dublin as well. So two Tight, for Dublin. Du Dublin We're going to have a Dublin Mayo All-Ireland semi-final according to Championship Matters. Thanks very much, lads. Almost time to go. Mm -hmm.